What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 378 of Opinions May Vary. I'm your host, JR. My co-host with me, Alex. Hello. We're doing it old school this week. Hella old school. Why? Because we're doing the same guest two weeks in a row. <laughs> That's what's up. Brett Kelly back in studio. Hey, hey. The art mercenary himself. Not the sharp mercenary. The art mercenary. Throwback to last week. If... That's a good callback. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's almost like it's really fresh on my mind. <laughs> this week, we're continuing with the old school trend. We're bringing something back. We're just we're having a relaxed episode this week. Uh, right now, I'm on vacation. You don't even know where I am. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Let's talk about... I'm panicking without you, to It's be true. It's true. You are. You I don't, don't blame you. <laughs> no one knows where I am. Someone please call the authorities. <laughs> we're doing back in year three? I don't remember. Two. We were in your parents' basement mm-hmm. back a long time ago, a couple mm-hmm. years back. We did back when we did a, a weekly segments. We we had it was the third weekly segment that we did. Yeah, because we did the big question, the question big mm-hmm. question, the flash questions, flash questions, and then the pitch, and then the pitch, which was mainly just Alex pitching things because I could never come up with anything. <laughs> but we're doing a like the pitch, but we're talking about YouTube. YouTube is pretty much my new television. If I'm not watching something on Twitch, I'm pretty much watching it on YouTube. Uh, Most of my nights, I'm laying in bed before bed. Let me pull up something on YouTube so I can fall asleep, too. Uh, Because don't have have cable, haven't needed cable for years. Way too expensive. Why would I need cable? Mm -hmm. And uh, That's that's your parents' medium. That's my parents' medium. I got Netflix (laughs) and Hulu, and I also have YouTube. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm only going to watch one commercial that lasts six seconds. <laughs> and if you have ad block, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you got no commercials. Mm-hmm. But if you want to support the channels that you like, you can always turn off your ad block or not use ad block at all. I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying ad block exists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> YouTube channels, it's it's become such a crazy, like, I never really subscribed to many channels. Oh, if I want to watch it, I'll just go find it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forget about them. In the last I month, would totally lose I've forget. started subscribing. Really? And, the, and now you haven't like up until now. Yeah, what? dude, I'm telling you. And now the videos, when they upload new ones, they're right at the top of my you, feed. You actually rang that bell. How? I <laughs> rang. Yeah, rang I, I bell. mashed nice. that sub button, nice. bro. How else would you know when the new Jenna Marbles video is up? I, I don't know because I've only Wednesday watched three slash maybe Thursday. But I used to give Jenna Marbles a lot of shit mm-hmm. back in back in the day when you know YouTube personalities were budding. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and what this person's famous because they make YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. And I used to give Jenna Marbles a lot of shit. Recently, couple within the last couple, uh, I guess a year or so, I watched a couple of her videos, and I was like, okay, that was that was funny, that yeah. was very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, in particular, the the follow along Bob Ross painting, yeah, that was a very cool video. Um, I did see that one. I was like, well, <laughs> she tries pretty hard, and it, it broke it broke my my shitty uh, preconception. Precon- yes, yeah. thank you. Preconceived of, notions, if you will, of yeah. what I had at Jenna Marbles. Um, so so shout outs to uh, to me for being a piece of shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've recently got like, and and I know Brett is going to be better at this than us because uh, at least me, because a lot of the channels that I'm here to recommend are channels that are already pretty famous, which kind of s- is stupid. But no, it's not. They're channels that I really enjoy their content. Um, You'd be surprised these days, like when you wa- like you're like, oh, this video or this piece of content has like a couple million views. You're like, everyone in the world must have seen it, and then right. you ask like eight of your friends, and like, yep. what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start out. I'm kicking it off. Okay. Screw you guys. Go for it. And I'm sorry. I might be taking one from Alex. I don't know. I'm starting off with an internet historian. Okay. Put put the yeah, put the gun down. No. <laughs> no. It's not gonna. I'm, sorry, internet go historian is one of my favorite channels right now. Mm-hmm. I stumbled upon it. I don't remember how. You'd think I'd remember being. Nope. I don't remember how. By the time I found it, you already knew it. Yep. Because no, did you show it to me? I I showed it to a lot of people. Because I think my first one was Fire Festival. Yep, that was my first as well. Because one of the, I think the first one that I saw was it was either Dashcon. Yeah, I think Dashcon was my first episode. Oh yeah. Um, because he covers, and he's only been doing this for two years, like a relatively new channel, one point mm-hmm. five million subscribers, and uh, he got very popular very fast. Like you can tell, like in his first couple videos. Right off the bat, like at the end, it's like, holy shit, guys, I can't believe, you know, this this is growing so quickly. And um, he covers like 
the the weirdest moments in like internet history. Like his first video was on GameStop's battle with Toads when people would call up GameStop and they asked if they had the the latest version of Battle Toads. <laughs> yep. And um, game of the year edition. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a lot of like troll mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, like with, oh, the with, pool's closed. Yeah. Pool's closed. Yeah. Have that man. That's an uncomfortable Actually, video. Let me redact that Mudkip edition. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Mudkip Pokemon. Yes. Yeah. Um, he did a whole series on Shia LaBeouf and he will not divide us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how four chan it was the four chan versus Shia LaBeouf and how they're hunting down that fucking flag. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable tracking plane routes and stuff. <laughs> Unbelievable. St- yeah, the weirdest stuff, man. Um, the the he did a video on Leroy Jenkins, the he man did. behind the meme, the man Leroy, and that like, also got uncomfortable. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it got it got sad. Yeah, he covers like con, he's done a couple convent. He did DashCon, which is the top. We talked about that years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rain Forest. Yep. The furry convention. Keep in mind these videos in the millions and, of views, and these are all things that he's tracking through the internet yep like he's not at any of them he hasn't participated in them he's basically reporting on them by research journalism Mm -hmm. on what's available at hand on the internet yeah which just to assemble this information takes a lot of work actually yeah uh, actually i appreciate his secondary channel that he uploaded which is Mm -hmm. internet historian incognito mode yeah right which is where like it's where like in the original one shows all like all the finished product, but then the secondary one, incognito mode, you get to see like yeah, he, he kind of does a little podcast about it with like people that he helped talk about it, and he talk about how he made it and like what information he let, had to leave out, and that's where some Q and As go too. Yes, yep. yeah, yep, exactly. He most recently did a video on the fall of seventy six, which was one of his longer videos. Normally, his videos are like five to ten minutes long. That was very fascinating. The, yeah, it was all about Fallout 76. It was almost a half hour long. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it, the videos fly by. It's And like, he's got this real smooth Australian accent. And mm-hmm. like, his his avatar that he uses is um, Hide the Pain Herald. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the, from the meme. Yeah. But uh, I do know, like, one of his biggest videos uh, is all about Fire Festival. This is before all the documentaries came out on Netflix mm-hmm. and and, uh, and Hulu. Hulu. Yep. He, he, he was an 11-minute video just covering Fire Festival, and, like, he goes into... It, it's just... it's it, They're funny, but they're also super informative, pretty depressing, and... Uh, they're they're well done. Yeah. If you... If you... Like, I don't know what his background is or what his training is or schooling, mm. but, like, he knows how to assemble a story. There's pause breaks... There's anticipation buildup. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, there's payoffs. Like we're a podcast and like we're we're used to no dead air. Dead air is, is death for for radio. Yeah. And like he lets it linger because he's showing you pictures. He knows like when to put in a gap or a space to, to tell a story. Mm. And that's what part of what makes it entertaining. And he's he's really chill and calm when he's explaining it. And even when like he builds up to an ending, it's like, oh, and that was the end of it. Mm-hmm. But we're only five minutes into a twenty-minute video, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's about it. And uh, and like I said, you know, one point five million subscribers—that's a lot of subs. Very popular. Um, like when I see on Reddit, like, what are you watching on YouTube? One of the top comments is pretty much always "Internet Historian." Yeah. And like just the other day, uh, I watch Twitch a lot, as I mentioned earlier. Twitch is kind of like my—I'm bored. I'm going to bed in twenty minutes. Let's see who's playing a game on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And uh, I watch Shroud every now and then. Shroud's one of the most popular Twitch streamers former Counter-Strike pro, Mm -hmm. got big into Apex Legends, which I was big into, so I might as well watch the person who's one of the best at it. Sure. And he, every now and then, just hangs out with his chat and just just talks uh, under the just chatting game Mm -hmm. thing, which used to not be able to do on Twitch. And uh, I went to check out his stream one day, and he's sitting there watching Internet Historian videos, like with his (laughs) chat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he watched like three or four of them, and he's like, you know, I really... And like he's like, I, I feel like this is this is kind of wrong. I'm gonna message the guy. Let me, you know, it's, make sure that it's okay for me because he's essentially broadcasting this guy's video to, to twenty, thirty thousand people. Mm. So like he's getting one view on his channel, but, 20, but really people. twenty thousand people are watching it. But you know, there's also the you know, well, those people could be going to subscribe to him now because like Shroud was just completely like this guy's content is fucking great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, yeah. I think he got permission to do it some more because a couple of days later I went and checked out his stream and he was watching more in historian <laughs> videos. And it's just one of those like, oh, what else does he have? You know, and it's like he does have a good amount of videos. Um, let's see, five times, one, two, three, four, five, six. Says, he has about 36 videos, but like they go by real quick. Um, and uh, and you just want more. But that's one of the first ones that I'm going to pimp, um, Internet Historian. Very cool, uh, very cool channel. Sweet. 
Who's next? Um, yeah, you want to? I'll go. Go for it. Um, <laughs> Jujimufu. J U J I M U F U. Huh? Are you just making up things? Nope. I believe it's pronounced Zubumafu, right? Wow. So they the focus, animal show. Yeah. <laughs> it's Zubuli Zoo. These guys focus on grip strength. Oh. And of all the weightlifting things you could follow, of like, if you've ever watched a CrossFit or a powerlifter video mm-hmm. that you immediately don't want to watch because it's just people angrily grunting. Yep. And they they're just talking numbers and reps and you don't understand what they're because you don't care it's boring whatever shut up yeah yeah these guys just focus on hands grip strength forearms and they travel around they go different places they talk to different people and that's all they focus on um one of my favorite things is they'll get different people together and test their grip strength it sounds lame but the two guys that do it one dude is a lifter he's a big guy Reminds me a lot of our good friend Bob, who's who's on our podcast a lot, has the same deep voice, is also super positive and really likes people. Mm-hmm. And he's really impressed when people do cool stuff. And they have this contraption, <coughs> excuse me, which is just a pole with a plate on the bottom. And you could just slide your plate weights over the top of it. And at the very top, it connects to a carabiner. And they have different models of uh, things you can grip to try and lift this, this weight. Right? Yeah. So let's say we put a 25 pound weight there and they connect that to this, this grip thing at the top and it basically looks like a hockey puck. And all you can do is grab this hockey puck and you practice lifting this thing. Right. And then how much weight can you pick up by a hockey puck? Sounds easy and Not practice. going underneath it, just like gripping the right circle theory. of it. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes they'll chalk it up. They have a different thing they could pick up. One is like, uh, uh, like think of a toilet paper tube, but like a better material, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it might spin, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to hold it without letting it spin or it'll slide off your hand. Oh, wow. And now start stacking weights on that and seeing if you could just pick it up or how many times you could pick it up, whatnot. Sure. <coughs> they went to a mall and they're like, what do you do for work that you could do this? And he goes, oh, I just work at a daycare. <laughs> <laughs> and like talking to a bunch of people and they, they would win, they would give them like a pre-workout if they, if they could do like a certain weight or not. Mm-hmm. Then they bring the thing to a climbing gym okay, for, for climbers. And they had like three young dudes there, like, late teens maybe early college guys mm-hmm. and they're all kind of skinny scrawny because they're climbers and they're having them play the game and test the weight and one dude picked up half of his body weight with half, his hand half his body weight one hand he could lift with Jeez. this thing yep wow and so but like it's not just people grunting trying to lift stuff like they're fun dudes cool and they're psyched to talk to whoever they're talking to yep mm-hmm. So like they're talking to scrawny kids who are climbers. Great, they have someone trying out. Um, like w- gyms are now all popping up with their own Ninja Warrior uh, ops, of course. Yep, mm-hmm. they're trying that all- along with people who can do it, and they're like comparing and like cracking jokes the entire time. And one of the things I like about these guys, along with um, with a guy called Go- Goku Flex, who's a lifter, mm-hmm. um, when they can't do it, they admit it, and. It's weird to watch lifters who are always amazing at what they're doing because they never, ever fail. And they always lift more and more weight and they can lift more than you. Mm-hmm. And how often do you see them go, yeah, my body's not ready for it today. Can't do it. Mm-hmm. My hurt my shoulder. I, I just can't do it today. Right. Sure. My, my back's too tight, whatever. Mm-hmm. And like they admit it. And Goku Flex admits like, yeah, yeah, I'm shut out. <laughs> 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 That's, but, uh, but these guys will do that. Like, you know, one they might have done some either for another show or for an episode or doing whatever. And like their arms aren't into it. Yeah. And they'll say, yeah, I can't do this today. My, I can't, you're, <laughs> you're strongly to today. Not feeling it. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's makes them human. Um, yeah. They had on like a, one of the world's strongest men competitors and they had him on specifically to try folding frying pans to see how, how hard that actually <laughs> is. Which we've seen, we've seen people do that at steampunk shows. Yeah, at you the know side the, 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 the sideshow freaks. Yeah. So they just a uh, average, average dude in a in a fedora, <laughs> top hat thing, yeah. and he's just folding up, folding up frying pans. And then he bent the length of rebar with his neck. Yep, yep. As you do. <laughs> and but they started off. They ended up like they were gonna fold the frying pans. It was gonna be like a ten minute video. They started doing grip strength instead, <laughs> and now it was a 20-minute video because <laughs> you want to lift up, you know, how many 45-pound plates can this world's strongest man pick up by, like, just one rectangular bar of metal? 
oh, that wow. you can't get underneath. You can only grip like the sides of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, huh. And like they're and when someone does it, they're not jealous. They're psyched. And yeah. it's it's a it's a positive channel. It's a lot of fun. Cool. And just to see like where they adventure to next and who they talk to, and just people being strong and they're happy for them. And uh, and and I I bought some of their products. Mm -hmm. These. You, you go to you go to Dick's Sporting Goods and you buy the the hand grippers, so yep. I got some of their specific models. I, I want to support them and like you know, maybe and they I, are brutal. Maybe I want to work in my grip strength. <laughs> yeah, the, those things are the, no the joke. The easiest one that you have, I can barely get it. Mm -hmm. Like to 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 squeeze it, and and to make the the ends touch, to make that as sexual as possible. <laughs> so I got uh, I got the three pack. The level one is a hundred pounds of strength. Level two is one hundred and fifty, and level three was two hundred. I can barely budge the two hundred. One hundred is easy, so I got to work on my strength. Yep. Um, and now you have the tools to do that. Yeah. And you have the motivation through the channel. Right. Yeah. I was I was like, do I want to like construct a plate to try and pick up? Like, do I want to <laughs> get my hockey puck attachment to a carabiner? Um, but like I said, they're they're fun. They're encouraging people to work out and get fit um and when i bought my thing they even like wrote a thanks thank you thing on a little postcard for me too um that is really cool but yeah it's jujimufu spell it again j-u-j-i-m-u-f-u -U. that's on the youtubes they're currently at about eight hundred thousand subscribers um and a lot of it's you know grip stuff and working out but it's not it's not just angry meatheads. They're mm. positive and they're fun. Cool. And that's what I got. Brett hit us. Uh, Yeah. Well, we passed the halfway point to Halloween a couple months ago, like about a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. April 30th, depending on when you when you consider Halloween to the season to start or whatever. Is it October 1st or is it October 30th? Exactly. <laughs> For me, it's always. <laughs> it's October 300. No, October 277th. No one, will, no one even keeps talking about their mothers. <laughs> um, but no, like, uh, so every... Halfway through, because we're, we're, you know, Alex and I are haunters, um, and you have you have partaken as as we as anyone who listens knows. Calling me a haunter would be an insult to all haunters. I said, uh, yeah, I said you, have I, uh, you have partaken, is what I'm saying. I'm that, a I'm a foe. I'm a, I'm a outside appreciator. I gave my shot. You have I shot my shot. You participated in the haunting process. It's true. Right. I scared a couple people. Yeah, when but, we, we talk to people, you know the biz. Yeah, yeah, you know it's yeah. fair. Exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty smart. Yeah, so. you. Almost like you have partaken, but <laughs> but what I'm getting is that is that at the at around this time of year I always get the itch and I'm like I kind of I, I gotta I gotta watch some hunting I gotta watch like people working hunt like I gotta like I got like I can't I can't go out scaring people because I don't get arrested right so like I need to find like I need to find like old school haunts let me see Halloween horror nights or whatever and um and it's kind of hard to find really good YouTube videos of like of hunt of right. people like working a hunt it's really dark until usually. Yeah. <laughs> exactly or like you'll see like haunting videos where it's like the quality isn't as as good even mm -hmm. though like the content might be pretty on par because it's like back from like 2000s or it's just lame reaction videos yeah, yeah. that too so i a number of years ago and i've been following i've been following this channel for a while it's called days of the living dead and it is uh hosted by a guy named jonathan laflamboy and he owns statesville haunted prison in chicagoland illinois huh. And he's been uh, doing these little like documentary style videos uh, for maybe eight or nine seasons now. So he'll do like a, he'll do one a week for the month of October, and he pretty much talks about like here's me, here's me at the beginning of the season. And every single season kicks off with them going to Transworld Haunt Show. Right. Ooh. So yep. you get to see them going around being like, I'm going to spend a whole lot of money on cool <laughs> stuff that's going to scare people. Transworld is the uh, the the Halloween haunted house like industry. That the yeah, industry the show. San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, like, for the haunt. The, yeah. the common public can't get in. People no. who own and run houses can get in, mm -hmm. or people who sell a product get in. Yes, and uh, so they start there, and then they run through an entire season, and uh, they upload like five, six, maybe ten minute videos every week throughout October, mm -hmm. and then sometimes they will put out like these little videos in between, and some of them are how to videos, but it all documents the entire existence of an independently run haunt. And how it operates, and it's sponsored by Froggy's Fog, and uh, it's been going on for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I drop them every once in a while, and they go through training new people. And at at least once a year, they upload a video that makes me cry because it absolutely <laughs> captures the culture uh -huh. and the community 
and like the the joy that people have for haunting as a business mm-hmm. and they show how to do it right you just get a bunch of weirdos that really like working with each other that are not f- afraid of being stupid that are skilled and are passionate and you just get to see him go ham hmm. and they have like these little crazy arcs the last couple of years jonathan uh he's always run haunt uh, statesville haunted prison and then recently he had bought the plot to uh, an old place called hell's gate out in chicagoland and he built a brand new haunt like from the ground up like a two-story haunted attraction in the middle of the woods because he was like i want to make a haunted attraction that is in the middle of the woods because there's nothing scarier (laughs) in a haunted than walking out in the middle of the woods in the middle of night and seeing the moon and you can't see anywhere else you're not like in a a amusement park like you're not you know you're not in someone's backyard yeah like you were in the middle of nowhere so like tell me the parking lot is outside of the woods. The parking lot is very. The, you have to get. You park in a parking lot away from the haunt, and you uh-huh. get bussed into the area. Huh. And they walk you right through the woods all the way up through a gate. And they have haunted the gate, and they've littered the gate, the entrance with haunt actors on top of that. Huh. It is fascinating for anyone who has been a part of haunting and wants to like see like a really good peek behind the curtain in like mm-hmm. a really fun, like engaging way. Days of the Living Dead. They've been doing it for eight seasons. The earlier seasons are a little rough, but but makes them even better because mm-hmm. you'll like you see the grind. Like you and I have been through the grind of yeah. being like, all right, we're two months behind and it's <laughs> September. We got a lot of stuff to do. I haven't slept in three days. I have the flu. <laughs> Let's get this done. We have three rooms to finish. Yep. We haven't trained any actors yet. <laughs> yep, it's incredible and and it's so like it's dare I say wholesome in a weird way hmm. where they're just like it's just the the act of haunt and like it's so good from from front to end from like conception to uh from conceptualizing a a haunt idea to building it to seeing it out and then hiring people training those people going through an entire season of haunting and then going through every single one so you'll like see these arcs of people being like yeah this guy was with us you'll see him in these videos and he's not here anymore because he shot he stopped showing up and he just quit he's not he's not you know he's not um he, uh, sorry the uh, the to- the team is Zombie Army. The John Lafan boy owns the company. Zombie Army, yeah, Zombie <laughs> Zombie Army, Zombie Army, mm. and like that's the company that runs Hauntville and and is the company that the the show is based around, hmm. um, which is owned by John Lafan boy, and like it's just really cool insight into the haunted the haunted house in the independent haunted house industry, hmm. and it talks about all the cool stuff that they do. So yeah, definitely give it a shot. It's very it's it's heinously underwatched. Like I think they have less than. They have less than ten thousand subs, and I don't know why. I, maybe it's just because of the fact that the haunt industry is like such like a small niche thing. Even though it's maybe it's a couple thousand people that give entertainment to millions of people every year. They're they're but, too busy watching clowns go live and vape. Yeah, on Facebook. You know they don't they don't do that, and uh, they at least they, but just check it out. I think you would have a major appreciation for it. And anyone anyone who watches that knows us through our 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 seasonal jobs. Mm-hmm. Just watch it, and even if anyone who's thinking about being part of a haunted attraction, to check it out, be like, I want to, I want to be in a scary place. Watch that show, and then you will get at least eighty percent of what the actual experience is working in a haunted attraction. The only twenty percent difference that I could think of is the people that you're working with, and then the way that your haunt is set up. Everything else is co- is shockingly like hard relate through and through. We might have to talk to them come spooky month. Uh. Uh, you, you mm-hmm. might need to contact them a little bit earlier than that. <laughs> Maybe a halfway to Halloween. No, they'll be thing. fine. Are they going to be busy yeah. at all in <laughs> yeah. October? But super animated, super cool. I I love every year. I watch them every week. Like mm-hmm. that's my unique thing. And then when I get the itch around this time of year, I will go through every single season again hmm. from the beginning because it's just really well shot. It's really well done. The quality it gets better, and you get to see them make these really cool things. So mm-hmm. like it's all unique. They're the same thing. They're like, we're not making these hack, you know, we're not doing our own, you know, we're not doing our own version where it's like, oh, it's Chucky scaring you. Da, da, da. It's not right. like a universal thing. Yeah. It's like, we're making our own characters. So like Hell's Gate, you're visiting an ancient house that has been overtaken by evil. So you are now going through a house where you're, where there are people trying to quell this house of evil. Mm-hmm. Um, this Just evil, like home. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Hits close to it. Um, and then you like, so you're, you have like these haunt actors that are living, that are helping, that are like polter, that are uh, like haunters, professional, like exorcists that are trying to lead you through the house. And then they, you know, something happens to them and you get to see these characters that they created that are like the, the twins. And they're like, there's just uh, so good. I don't mm. even want to spoil much of it. I've already been, I know I've been going off about this for a while, but days of the living dead, check it out. I love it. My next one, I think, should we each do like two more? Yeah, like sure. I'll do one. You'll do one. Bro, I'll do one. I'll do one more. You'll do one. I'm down if we have time. If we have yeah. time, yeah, 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 we'll get we'll, we'll get there. Let's see my, how we go. My next one. Uh, when I said Internet Historian is probably my favorite channel, this one might be the only competition. Like uh, they might be the top two. Like like tied for first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm probably gonna say that again for the next channel too. But I uh, recently, uh, and by recently I mean about five months ago, became obsessed with a channel called Nakey Jakey. I've been sending it to everyone I know, including Alex. I made him watch a couple videos hmm. uh, a couple months ago. I was turned on to this because of Anthony Birch. Oh. I follow Anthony Birch on Twitter, and he reposted one of Nakey Jakey's videos uh, where he was mentioned early on uh, for uh, "Hey Ash, Hey Ash, What You Playing?" Yeah. and uh, some articles that he used to write on Destructoid uh, because Nakey Jakey did a video on Red Dead Redemption Two. A video called Rockstar's Game Design is Outdated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, he goes in depth. And immediately I was fascinated because it's just a guy sitting on a yoga ball in front of a green screen, talking about video games, making some very, very valid and serious points. But also he's hilarious. And his style is exactly what I like in things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like that kind of random... Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just kind of like in your face hilarity, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And like, it's not necessarily just specifically video games. His most recent two videos or his most recent videos on uh, illegally downloading music. So it's a video on like Napster and LimeWire, you know, back in the day. Hmm. Uh, one before that was uh, Disney Channel original movies. Um, so again, it's that nostalgic kind of thing. Yeah. Because um, I grew up on Disney Channel original movies. My sister. Uh, if Dis- if you turn off Disney Channel, my sister, you'd have to answer to my sister, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, which was never fun. Um, mm-hmm. He also has a video called Scholastic Book Fairs. I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, oh, awesome. And uh, the the videos just go on and on. He's another relatively newer channel. His channel's about three years old, sitting at one point one milli views, uh, not views, one point one million subscribers. And uh, he's just this really cool guy who's seen. Like, he's also young. He's like significantly younger than me i believe like mid-20s i think and uh he just makes these really neat videos they're usually pretty quick some of them are on the longer side but like the, the topics are something that you don't see in other videos which is what i dig mm-hmm. um like one of his entire videos is the power of playstation startup sounds and he just talks about <laughs> what happens when you boot up the original like the and, it, and i completely forgot about this the original playstation when you boot that fucker up yeah mm-hmm. it sounds so good yeah, <laughs> like just the 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 jingle that that plays. Yeah, um, the like the power of video game sound effects. Uh, he has one video called "Mass uh, Dark Souls Saved Me," which is a complete. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like left turn from his usual videos, uh, where he's there's no green screen. It's him laying in bed mm-hmm. <laughs> with like the covers up, laying on his side with the camera facing him, and he's just talking about a significant story about how Dark Souls. Was, was impacted a part of his life. Oh wow! And uh, it's a really cool, really neat video. Um, uh, Rise and fall of Dance Dance Revolution. Save Ooh. points in video games. Huh? You know, like just stuff that you don't really think about, but like he has a cool way of explaining it, and really makes you think. Like you know, that's that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, he started out back with a series called Games That Should Bang. His first cu- <laughs> his first couple videos were were all that uh, all that series like the first his first video is games that should bang is Grand Theft Auto Five and Metal Gear Solid. I haven't watched that one yet. I have watched one of his games that should bang. I watched um, NBA Jam, and uh, what was the one where you go around exploring that everyone hated at first? No Man's Sky, No Man's oh. Sky and NBA Jam because. And here's a spoiler here, uh-huh. but essentially he gets at you would essentially have Space Jam, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's amazing how he gets there. Yeah, yeah, I was sold on NBA Jam already. Yeah, because like that's a good. That's, he's I disagree. 
You don't like him? Really? I was terrible at that. I, right. I sport house sports. All right. I just was bad at that game, so a game sucks. Shout okay. out the rim. There you go. I uh, <laughs> he seems like a very genuine, cool dude. Uh, one thing, one little neat factoid. Mm-hmm. I this isn't a brag. This is part of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I support him on Patreon. Mm-hmm. The month after I started supporting him, he had a delay in his video. Like he typically releases a video a month mm-hmm. for the most part. There was no video that month. And he was like, I didn't put out any content for you guys, so I turned off Patreon for this month. Didn't collect any money from his patrons. Hmm. Like, nice. Because he was like, I didn't make a thing, so why would you pay for a thing? Good on him. And he's like, I was going through some shit, had to figure some stuff out, make, I'm working on new videos, those are coming, so this month, you're not going to be charged. I didn't even know you could do that on yeah, Patreon. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I thought, you know, that's... You don't have to do that. I'm not upset. I wouldn't have been upset even if he'd still collected money. Mm-hmm. There's a reason I, I I I throw money at him on a monthly basis. It's not a lot, but it's something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's because I want him to make cool things. And if that means that he only makes a, that he didn't make a cool thing this month, fine, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was uh, a telling uh, characteristic, I guess. You know, the type of person that that he seems to be. Awesome. I, again, I've never met him. He was actually in New York when we were in New York because he's from like North Dakota. Oh, wow. <laughs> he, yeah, he's out there. And um, he was in New York City the day we were, like dressed up as like a goth, like with the fishnets and the, he had makeup on and he was doing the dance that you see the doing under the bridge right. to ta- yeah, yeah. in yeah, a video. Yeah. And he's like, hey, if anyone's going to be in like Times, I can't remember where it was. I can't remember. It was Times Square or Union, somewhere in New York City. Yeah. He's like, hey, tomorrow, tomorrow at like noon. <laughs> meet up the only thing is you have to wear black because they were filming something for one of his videos right Mm -hmm. and uh he posted some like clips and it looked uh, he had like a couple hundred people there wow um good on just just all wearing black like and i have no (laughs) idea what it's for but i i can't wait to see the end result Hmm. but um nakey jakey uh big fan um his videos are really cool and i uh i highly recommend them sweet good pitch you're a good pitch you are (laughs) I'll pitch your goods. Oh, the lock picking lawyer Mm -hmm. is my second Mm -hmm. one. Cool. We had to fight over this one. I was like, (laughs) fine, Alex, you take it. (laughs) At some point, I brought it up while we were doing a little mini mini adventure to hang out with Super R Fight. Mm -hmm. And I brought this up in the car ride. And they were like, what? And Jaro was like, yeah, this is great. And this guy basically picks a bunch of locks. He gets padlocks, he gets bike locks, he gets a lot of locks. He has over, he's too shy from having 900 videos. Jeez. And uh, and it's just him picking locks. Because right. there's a lot of different kinds, which I had no idea. Master locks been through like 100 different variations or so. And he explains what kind of locks they are, what makes them difficult, what makes them easy um why they're a good idea why they're a bad idea um what tools he uses how he does it and it's i mean it's the thing you don't want criminals to see yeah but but it's also just interesting to get an idea of like well if i own this product how is this basically paper to a criminal Mm. like if someone wanted to pick my locks how easy would it be and is that terrifying or not um and like, I can't tell if it's just straight up knowledge or skill or whatever, or the, the tools this guy has. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing like keys that I've never seen before because they've got extra divots on them. It's not just the teeth. Mm-hmm. There's like divots on the, I mean, he's got names for everything. He put up a video three days ago with a curved key. <laughs> the key has a curve and you have to put it in at an angle and then like straighten it out as it goes in. Yep. Wow. And so there's some that like make it sound like this should be impossible to pick. And yep. he goes... I'm going to be using a raking method and he puts on the tension wrench. He's like, I had some tension. And then he just like, it's, it's just, and it's open. But yep. wow. Cause he's just like shaking it in there back and forth until it connects all the things. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. once the tension's on at the turn, if you happen to like hit one of the tip pins or tumblers, mm-hmm. it'll stick. Huh? Right. Okay. And yeah, so, yeah. and then for other ones, he'll go in and try and like gently set, the pin or the tumbler whatever they all are mm-hmm. and he counts them out he's like so we've got three is binding so <laughs> exactly 
<laughs> one is locked. Two is is smooth. One is binding. Three is binding. And, and back to one. Ba- <laughs> <laughs> and it's fantastic. It's a very smooth way of talking. Yeah. Wow. Um. And like. It's no one of the things Jarvis stressing when we were with our friends. It's no clickbait. He says what he's gonna do, and then he does it. And there's no anticipation. He's like, "Here's the thing. Here's I'm gonna come at it. Here we go, and it's open." Wow. Most of his videos are under five minutes. Some most a lot of his videos are under three minutes long. Nice. And like sometimes the intro, it's like he'll still be doing the intro. And you're two minutes into a three minute video. So you're like, damn, he's going to pick this real quick, <laughs> like within seconds. Jeez. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's the best way, the easiest way to put it is it's no bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the best. It takes away all the garbage about YouTube. And it's just, I'm a lock picking. I don't know if he's a real lawyer. I'm assuming he is. He is. Uh, and he picks locks and like he, he puts out pr- like a video like every day almost with like different mm-hmm. types of locks. One of my favorite things is when he'll pick a lock, and then the lock manufacturer watches that, and is there just at home like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the auto lock, the he he did one. He w- he did a bike lock recently, <laughs> and he he showed like he added a whole new <laughs> level of enjoyment that I was like I wasn't ready for. <laughs> so he he did the, he did this bike lock which yeah. it's it's was it's made of like metal wires that loop into itself mm-hmm. um like a zip tie practically yeah but the lock is on the end of the zip tie and like there's rubber coating over it so you, you have to get through the rubber to to cut the metal if mm-hmm. you're gonna try and just cut it if you're not gonna pick the lock itself and he's like oh, i just did it with some tin snips two and seconds the, and the company is like well, uh, he was faking it, or we, right. we can't do that, or he something. Those was, aren't tin snips that you can just buy off the street. Those are special produced. Or, They're a bootleg. They're not ins- ours. They sent him like another lock. He got an like, but this one had extra metal wires in it. A like, seventy-five dollar lock. Yeah. Oh man. And so okay. Was, yeah. Please so go. like they saw him and they were like, "Well, you didn't. That you're cheating somehow. You didn't do it. <laughs> it's like on the playground for 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 fifth graders. You're cheating." And they send him a new one, which is a which is a better version. Mm-hmm. And he has the same tin snips. Or like you know, he's like, when people when cops like arrest uh, thieves, they find them with these tin snips on them. You can buy them at Home Depot because that's what they'll use to cut certain things. Yeah. And so like he's like, all right, let's see if these will do it. And he like goes to cut. He's like, well, can't do it with one hand. And he just see like two hands clip and well that didn't work. <laughs> Seventy five dollar bike lock. So I want to note. The absolute 180 that I just had, like when you're talking about this, I was like, "Oh, that's cool, yeah, picking lock is fun." And then when you input now, like the fact that he's like, in one sentence, you, I was like, "I'm now fully on board." Like I'm so on board for this now. Mm-hmm. And it also raises it raises awareness too because like mm-hmm. he bought the highest ranked safe uh, available on Amazon, yeah, which also happens to be manufactured by Amazon. Mm. Go figure. Oh, wow. But it's like it's like a home safe, you know. Yeah. You can put it in your closet or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he opens it. It's like a, 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 a pin pad safe. You got to put in a pin. Yeah. To, to to open it, he there's like a a bypass lock on it. If you happen to not forget it or not remember your pin or something, there's a bypass thing that uses like a circular type of key. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you can buy this 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 pick on Amazon for ten dollars. Mm-hmm. And he opens it in seconds, like literally like two seconds. And he's like, this is the highest rated safe available on Amazon. Jeez. Um, and it's just knowledge. Yeah. Yep. Like a lot of what he's doing is skill, but is he just mm-hmm. knowing how the things work? And it's kind of terrifying. Yeah. But like I said, manufacturers know, should watch and like figure out how they should step up their game to yeah. prevent a lot of this. That's um, awesome. I love it. Yeah. He ran through like, because he always gets questions like, well, what's the best lock? What's your favorite lock? And... He, he, like it depends on what their purpose is or how big they have to be because mm-hmm. like some weigh like 10 pounds and because what his top two favorite were like old military locks that Makes like sense. would go on military cargo containers and shit mm-hmm. um and he's like these are practically unpickable um and it's like but these are my favorite because they're this they're this, they're this and he explains a lot about them um like what kind of steel it is and how thick it is and and even the tools he's using is like how many micromillimeters wide they are <laughs> he had one a couple weeks ago, I believe it was a bike lock. And it was mildly, dis- not even mildly, it was disturbing because, and even he said in the beginning, he's like, this is this is a problem. Because like, 
There's the tension tool, which is like a little like wrench type of thing that you put in the lock and you put constant tension on it, like Alex was saying, as you pick. Mm -hmm. And then, so, you know, in theory, if you pick it correctly, you, when, as you're putting the tension on it, you're going to open that lock. Mm -hmm. um, and he puts the tension tool in and just pushes on it and it unlocks. <laughs> he doesn't even pick anything. He doesn't put anything beside the tension tool and, and put a little bit of tension torque on the lock and it just opens up. You don't even need a key. It's, it's it's like yeah, you 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 inherit that hand me down car where you can like start it but then you can pull the key out <laughs> yeah, yeah and the car mm. will stay started you know mm -hmm. and it's it's Ooh. and it's it, it's it's also back in the day a friend of mine had a lock picking set like very basic really flimsy tools mm -hmm. but we learned how to pick like you know just generic master locks within yeah. in a night and like it actually came in handy once because at my old job we lost the key to the dumpster <laughs> and I was like hey man you got your gear lock pick set and he's like yep and, pop, and I I picked that lock. <laughs> for for good reasons, <laughs> and uh, like, like a man with with this type of knowledge, like yeah. I'm I'm happy he's on our side. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's even got a a car boot on too. Yeah, that was an interesting because there was a scam. I don't where, watch that one yet. Where there's a scam artist, a guy going around. Yeah. Um, who would boot people's cars? Yeah. And be like, you got to pay me this amount, or else you know, we're gonna have your car towed. Right. Because you weren't supposed to park there apparently and like they they were the guy was put in jail mm -hmm. but um he showed how easy it is to pick the lock on a boot hmm. and like he puts it on his car and has it <laughs> open in seconds Jeez. um so it's not just like padlocks bike locks yeah um he's got uh and it's not just using tools uh the, he he shows how to do like the two wrenches you put the wrenches in between your one last night <laughs> oh wow and how to force, <laughs> is a new method because the one him. you see on the one with all the crazy like 60 million views on youtube is yeah. the wrong way to do it yeah he shows a different way <laughs> huh and then also also scary is uh the locks on guns your trigger lock that you can some of them you just like pry off oh jeez. Yep. Nope. and like if you can still pull the trigger if you could still slide the bolt or whatever all that and then he also shoots locks Every now and then. Yep, He'll go sometimes. to the range and put some bullets into him. <laughs> well, hey, if he gets the job done, you know? But it's a very interesting channel. You can watch 10 videos in five minutes. And uh, I, a friend had to load up some stuff in a storage unit. Mm -hmm. And I watched what lock he put on it. And I took a picture. And then I looked up the video on how to crack it. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I was like, hey, man, you want to get a new lock? <laughs> and it's like, well, he's doing this like out of, in the comfort of his home. Mm. And like, how much different is it if you're trying to like do it out? Yeah, like sneaking into a storage unit uh, building. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure some of them are not exactly <laughs> easy to do discreetly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he's definitely. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my second one. Brett, hit us nice. with a second one. This most likely is going to be our last one. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Um, it better be fucking good. <laughs> I actually, I so I'm going to give you an option uh, for this. So what do you want to hear more about? More. Um, Video game DJ or uh, stream or uh, video or uh, RPG games. RPGs. Wait, one is specific and one is broad about the same subject, right? So video game and then RPGs. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Give so, me the DJ one. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, so I really like this guy. There's a DJ. You probably heard the name DJ Cutman. If that's not, a, that's, that's okay. That's, that's I feel like, <laughs> yeah. If not, that's okay. Uh, DJ Cutman is a is a is a dude who's been um he's been. Yo, doing... I, I can't go without saying how do you defeat him? Do you have to use Bubble Man or yeah, no? It's... DJ MC Metal Bubble Man. Metal Man. <laughs> it's fuck. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, it, but it's because he's a he's a big Me Mega Man fan, of course. Um, on. and he's a he's a DJ where he makes his own music, he makes his own remixes. Um, and he's probably one of the busiest people that works in chip tune and video game music that I know. Hmm. Um, and he's criminally underwatched. His channel is maybe just about, uh, almost about to hit 10,000 subs. Um, but the reason being is because um, he has 310 episodes, uh, videos uploaded on his channel, which are him converting his, uh, his Twitch feeds into radio shows. And he spent about two years or so. Um, he has 200 episodes that are ra range between an hour to two hours a piece mm -hmm. of him just finding his favorite chiptune and video game music. And he'd been doing it probably for longer, maybe closer to five years. Mm. Um, but he's a classic case of a guy. This is going to sound like a weird comparison. He's like the Elvira of <laughs> chiptune music. Okay. Whereas in like Elvira has like, here's all these horror movies that you've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Here, bask and enjoy them with me. 
and I'm somewhat charismatic. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> DJ Cutman is kind of like that, where he's like, I'm a big old DJ video game nerd, and I like music, and I like chiptune. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my thing. And he has like an actual like outfit that he made out of really? like, yeah, that's like the chiptune, like a like Cutman. Um, it's like his <laughs> disc is like, he has, like, it's a CD with like a cut in it hmm. on the top. Where he has like a full helmet. So it's not even just that, but his channel's called This Week in Chiptune. Mm-hmm. It took me that long to get there. But This Week in Shiptune is one of many channels that he has. He has like a whole conglomerate. So he does This Week in Shiptune, a weekly program that he has off and on for maybe five years. And he grows his community of people that now watch him. It's like all these video game music artists send him his music to play on his live stream channel. Huh. Like he's had... And he's like had buddies like have to like you know he's lost like gear due to specific things and like all the artists that like he shares and works in commute and like once again develops a community. I have such a, like a weird community like motif going these days, <laughs> but like goes reaches out and like he builds this community from the ground up where it's like it's like a whole sub faction um, people what you know weekly listeners. It's like a radio show essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he's he that's not enough. He goes hey I really like this. But I'm going to make my own radio. I'm going to make my own music label called Game Chops. And it's going to be exclusively for people who like remixing video game music. <laughs> so he makes an entire channel called Game Chops. And now he has This Week in Chiptune and Game Chops running. Then he doesn't stop there. He makes a third <laughs> channel called Jozu Music, which is pretty much music that he likes that is uh, that is Chiptune, but is not necessarily made with uh, n- video n- games. Video game. Okay. Yeah, it's not v- video game remixes. Okay. So he's just like, this is just music that is made with the same tunes that are used to make chiptune, but making the, all this brand new stuff. And like 200, 200 episodes of This Week in Chiptune and all those artists, he kind of put a lot of those artists in Jozu music. Hmm. So now he now he's a guy that at one point was operating three, he's had three channels under his belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Game Chops is probably his most popular. I think he has like a couple hundred thousand, if not like more subs on that. Um, and that's just because of the popularity of the video game remix. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jozu, I really like a lot too, because that he just plays everything from chip tune and, and video game and digital inspired music that's like that covers metal, funk, um, future funk, uh, like house, bass, like you name it. It's he has it, and um, and he also you probably recognize him because he also participates in he hosts the DJ, uh, the DJ battle that happens every year at Magfest in Maryland. Okay. So like he's so like he's all the way over there and like you know he like if you name anyone that you know in the t- in the chip tune scene like uh James Landino, he's a pretty big pop he's a pretty popular YouTuber that makes a bunch of stuff. He um he's known for you know the the I'm not gonna. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> but like but he's a cool dude and like he actually retired his his station maybe a year or so ago because like he just was going like he's he just got married recently so like he's kind of doing his own thing being like I have made a 200 episode show about all this music and like, and he started it back. Like, you know, he was like, after seeing the scene grow up and being like, I don't need to do this anymore because there are so many great there. Like you spit in the air, and it's going to land on 18 people that are making amazing music and it's mm-hmm. hard to showcase it all. And I feel like I don't necessarily need to be there to be the presenter. I think I can just go, go out and help with everything mm-hmm. and he says that and he kind of you know he's retired this week in chiptune but you can still go check it out and it's amazing he normally has like themed episodes so it'll be like you know halloween episodes it'll be like fun like scary music or whatever mm-hmm. and then he'll have like i'm in a really happy mood we're gonna do some happy hardcore stuff or we're gonna do some <laughs> bubbly anime music and he's just very um an affable um, no amiable amiable affable both he's like <laughs> he's both of those things like just very charming uh person who's just really happy and a supportive person and like he's a guy that rallied an entire community around him in his channel, um, so I really like his stuff. Um, yeah, he's based out of Brooklyn, I think. Or at least he might have moved out recently. I've just realized I've never paid enough attention to chip tunes, and it's it it feels like it should be a forgettable thing because mm-hmm. like oh it's it was the soundtrack for those video games back thirty years ago. Yeah, and it's like yeah well, okay, but let's let's hang on for a bit. Because we were uh, working spooky time. Mm -hmm. You were playing some music over uh, your phone or whatever. Yep. And I was like, Brett, this kind of sounds like the intro intro to the Nerdist. Oh. And it was the same band. Yes. And (laughs) Anamanaguchi. I have no idea. (laughs) I I guarantee you it was Anamanaguchi. 
Yeah. Because like I would listen to a lot of Nerdist because it's a podcast where they talk to people. Mm hmm. And like that, every every time they had like this this chip tune intro. Yep. And I was able to recognize enough of that to put it together with what you were playing, and be like, this sounds like similar thing. Was it the song that said "meow" a million times? Meow, 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 meow. meow Definitely meow, not, because okay. I feel like I would hate that song. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's valid. <laughs> it's not for everyone. I just know that song because Anamata Gucci has like a bunch of stuff, and like mm-hmm. it's the same band that did the the. Um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World uh, soundtrack, but that that's fine. I was I was gonna say like, is that like what uh, what Miami? Yeah, Miami. Yes. What's Jar? Well, Hell? that's more like synthwave. Like, right. Yeah, that's, like that's synth- Hotline 80s. Miami. Hotline Thank Miami. you. Yes. That's more like the eighties Re- retro retro wave synth wave dark okay. wave type of stuff, which still fits because it because it, it's uh, essentially what. Uh, I mean, there's chip tune, which is more video game influence, but then there are, it's yeah. it's kind of like the genres itself is permutated in a lot of ways, where you have artists that normally would not be making music with, like it's literally chip tune is literally music that you make with a Game Boy or like <laughs> or like you you figure out a way to code the information with mm-hmm. like a game system, whether it be like I've seen people do two out. I've seen it there, actually you there's on one of the episodes. I forget the guy's name. Trey Frey. There's a guy named Trey Frey who does an entire hour long live mix using four Game Boys, and he makes his own music to it, and it's amazing. It's huh. so good. There was a guy that lived up in a like I, I just after going through him and I found so many different, um, so many different artists. There was actually an artist that was on the Cape for a little bit named Active Knowledge. He li- he lives in Houston now, but he used to be run uh, eight uh eight bit. Boston 8-Bit for a while, which actually ran in conjunction with uh, Anime Boston, I believe, or Boston Comic Con, another nerd, mm-hmm. another nerd convention that happened out there, like that they would work with, uh, that Boston 8-Bit would help support other events that would happen that were also nerdy. Um, but yeah, like, uh, like there's such like a weird breadth of of uh, music that is generated from, you know, from 18-Bit to 16-Bit, mm-hmm. and just seeing how that technology has been used and like kind of like um, just pioneered in a lot. And, and I, and I do mean that truly like it's music that used to be, you know, it's stuff that was used to be the background for the video games you played. And now you have people deconstructing that and using it to make orchestrals and mm-hmm. making carving swaths of music and like in sampling and digital, it's like, as you can tell, like I, I normally paint myself as a metalhead cause I go to RPM fest and stuff. But like, mm. I grew up in that age where like I just listened to anything that was outside of anything that I would normally hear in a regular <laughs> yeah. business. So that would pull me out to prodigy and like Atari teenage riot. And like, you know, obviously in corn and like we, we've talked to this point, <laughs> but like chip tune is kind of like a weird in a weird way in my mind, like an odd evolution of that musical timeline mm-hmm. of seeing that music being, uh, being used to not only channel and, and, be used to kind of recreate these sounds and like trigger those nostalgia buttons a little bit, but also just kind of push ground and creating new sounds in general musically. Hmm. And uh, DJ Cutman, he has a really great legacy of being like, I really, I love this music so much. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find the stuff that I love and I'm going to share it with everyone else. Mm-hmm. So like he will do bits where it's like, Hey, this artist just relaunched, launched a brand new thing on their band camp. You're good. Here's like the first four <laughs> tracks and go check out and support them. And, hmm. Like I picked up his last v- album of co- of video game remixes that he came out with DJ Cutman himself on his Bandcamp, and uh, and I really liked them a lot. Like he had a deal where he was like, "You can buy my entire discography for fifty bucks," and I was like, "I want to," and I <laughs> and I, I slept on it. I didn't get it in time, mm-hmm. but he's like a really cool dude of a guy that really helped support the scene. Um, and like he's a guy that everyone, if you're in Chiptune, you know who he is. Um, but he's just, he's just a really cool dude. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that. So yeah, I kind of cheated and just, and decided to drop like a, a plethora. But that was channels. three. Yeah. I was going to say like, real, there, there's a, there's a bunch that I just wanted to fire off real quick at the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, that, I, that I wish we could get this, this oh, one. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Like I, um, I, ex- this is exactly how Alex said it was going to go. And I was like, nah, <laughs> yeah. we're going to have time for a bunch. Guess yep. who was right. Yeah, well, shut up. Uh, Gus Johnson, very funny YouTuber who also does some topical stuff. Frederick Knudsen? Knudsen? I don't know if the K is silent. He does a series called Down the Rabbit Hole. Colin got me into it. Nice. Super interesting shit about the most random stuff you've never heard of. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, like, uh, uh, informational mm-hmm. um, and also kind of sad a lot of the times. Mm. Uh, KMAC 2021 does funny guitar videos. Yep. Uh, and and a plethora of others. They're, just go find stuff. Uh, Inked Magazine started up a youtube channel yes. in 2017 
mm-hmm. and as, somehow they either get a bunch of artists together at conventions, but they talk to tattoo artists and have them talk about tattoos. They ask them questions, and it's just like a whole bunch of artists answering a whole bunch of questions, and it's all done pretty well, and you get a lot of opinions about tattoos if you're into tattoos. And even if you're not, it's still really educational getting a lot of different opinions. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. H Bomber Guy, too. Go watch H Bomber Guy. He's great. You know Wasteland Weekend? No. No? You know Wasteland Weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have a YouTube channel called The Apocalypse Outpost. <laughs> and they actually do an entire thing of talking about what is Wasteland Weekend? Why do you want to go? How do you want to go? And they talk about like stuff like how to make your costume, mm-hmm. how to live out how to live out in the desert for a week and like not die. And like how like how everything works. How do you properly cosplay? How do you build your stuff? Like it, it it's it's once again it's like a pirate radio station. Hmm. I forget the name of the host, but he's pretty cool. Like he just talks about all sorts of stuff. And they're like, yeah, we're listening. You know, they'll do like Q and A's and stuff. But the Apocalypse Outpost for Wasteland Weekend that takes place in California once a year. Super no, it's in Nevada, but uh, Arizona. It's in the West. <laughs> it's in a desert. It's yeah, out there. It's in the desert. But yeah, so Apocalypse Outpost. If you ever want to find out what it is, that's pretty fun. Hmm. It's just re- brand new, maybe like a cut, maybe a year or two old. Things on YouTube for you to watch. If you have your own favorite channel that you like uh, perusing, let us know because I'm always like, we're always looking for for new stuff to watch. Hell yeah, uh, and um, and enjoy and consume and and, and uh, entertain ourselves with. That's gonna do it, Brett. Two weeks in a row. It's like it's 2013, 2012 <laughs> all over again. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not Skyping in this time. So it's true. Exactly. You're, you're not living three hours away on the Cape. The future's now. Technology the future is here. Is now. <laughs> uh, my laptop battery is just about dead, so that's all the reason I need uh, to say that's going to do it for this week. Until next time, I have been JR. I'm Alex. And I am Brett Kelly. And this has been episode 378 of Opinions May Vary. <laughs>